In the world of medicine, Joachim Bolt's story serves as a stark warning about the consequences of unethical actions. Born in Germany in 1954, Bolt began his career with great promise, gaining much recognition for his pioneering research. However, as the early 2000s rolled in, accusations of wrongdoing emerged, transforming his once bright career into a perplexing tale of controversy and ethical lapses. At the core of Bolt's early success was his groundbreaking research in anesthesiology, a medical field vital for the care of surgical patients. His research centered on a vital medical practice known as fluid therapy, which is a method essential for maintaining patients' hydration, replacing lost fluids, and sustaining their bodily functions during surgical procedures. Bolt's research focused on choosing the right fluids for these therapies, with a special emphasis on a substance called hydroxyethyl starch, also referred to as HES. Think of HES as a special kind of liquid containing tiny particles. This liquid plays a key role in increasing the volume of the watery part of blood in patients. Bolt's discoveries about using HES were impressive and had a big impact on how doctors treated patients in surgery and critical care. Little did anyone know that this pioneering research would eventually take an unforeseen turn. The story begins in December 2009, when the journal Anesthesia and Analgesia unveiled a study conducted by Bolt that sent shockwaves through the medical community. This study compared two solutions used during heart bypass surgeries, one containing a substance known as albumin and the other containing HES, the liquid that was at the center of Bolt's research. Just two weeks after this publication, a curious reader reached out to the journal's editor-in-chief, Stephen Schaefer. In an email filled with intrigue, the reader expressed confusion about the research findings, calling them extraordinary, even though the study involved a small number of participants. It's worth noting that a small sample size can sometimes lead to less statistically significant results, making it harder to draw strong conclusions from the data. Schaefer, who held the positions of both the journal's editor-in-chief and a professor of anesthesiology at Columbia University, believed that Bolt was remarkably prolific. He observed that Bolt submitted approximately one manuscript per month to their journal and others in the field. What stood out to Schaefer was that Bolt tended to publish studies that appeared underpowered due to their small size, yet these studies often contained important discoveries. Furthermore, Schaefer noted that all of Bolt's papers listed well-established figures in the field as co-authors, creating the impression that he had an exceptionally effective team supporting his work. A day after the initial email, a second message arrived from another curious reader casting further doubt on the authenticity of Joachim Bolt's research. In response, Stephen Schaefer decided to reach out to Bolt for a discussion, believing there might be a straightforward explanation or error. Initially, Schaefer assumed that the paper had undergone the journal's standard peer review process, a procedure where other experts in the field evaluate the research before publication. However, during his meticulous re-examination, it wasn't until the third reading that he stumbled upon a glaring anomaly. The research claimed to achieve a perfect acid-base balance after surgery, a phenomenon that had never been seen before in the history of medicine. In medical terms, an acid-base balance refers to the body's ability to maintain the correct pH level in the blood and bodily fluids during and after a surgery. Reaching a flawless equilibrium in critical care is exceedingly unusual and carries profound significance. It signals that the patient's physiological state is steady and falls within a healthy range. Schaefer's skepticism grew as he pondered the extraordinary nature of this claim. Upon closer examination, the inaccuracy of certain aspects of the study became obvious. Three weeks after the first email, Schaefer received another message, this one from a senior and highly esteemed investigator in the field. This message highlighted another unusual aspect of Bolt's research. The subjects consistently displayed similar responses or outcomes, which is not typical in medical studies, where individuals typically exhibit diverse reactions. In the ensuing weeks, Schaefer made numerous attempts to contact Bolt via email and phone, but there was no response. Bolt seemed to hope that Schaefer would lose interest, but Schaefer's determination remained unshaken. Schaefer, 
Resolute in his pursuit of answers and a suitable body to address allegations of research misconduct, pressed on. He went to Klinikum Ludwig Schaffen, the institution where Bolt was conducting his studies, to seek information and potentially address concerns about Bolt's research. However, Klinikum Ludwig Schaffen did not have its own research ethics committee, which led Schaefer to explore other avenues for addressing the allegations. This eventually led to his contact with Landis Serstekammer Rhineland Faults, LAK RLP, the State Medical Association in Rhineland Faults, Germany. In May 2010, LAK RLP initiated an investigation. However, their authority was limited to assessing whether Bolt adhered to professional ethical standards, not the validity of his research. This meant that while Bolt's work lacked scientific rigor and proper ethical approval, there was no immediate way to cross-examine the accuracy of his findings until someone else conducted a similar study with different results. In October 2010, after months of examination, LAK RLP's investigation uncovered several serious issues with Bolt's study. It was revealed that the research lacked evidence of written informed consent from participants and failed to follow proper prospective randomization procedures. Notably, the study never received the necessary ethics approval from the outset, and the hospital administration had failed to conduct a thorough investigation, likely influenced by Bolt's esteemed reputation. As a result of these findings, anesthesia and analgesia made the decision to retract the article, acknowledging the ethical and procedural shortcomings. In the wake of the LAK RLP investigation, both LAK RLP and Klinikum Ludwig Schaffen established a joint investigative committee to scrutinize the integrity of Bolt's research. In November 2010, this committee released its preliminary findings, which were nothing short of astonishing. According to the committee's report, there were no original patient data or laboratory records to substantiate the study's conclusions. Interestingly, it was also revealed that albumin, the substance Bolt used for comparison with HES in his research, hadn't been utilized at the hospital since 1999. The hospital's pharmacy confirmed that no albumin had been delivered to the cardiac operating theaters for many years. This staggering revelation raises a disturbing possibility. There's scant convincing evidence to suggest that Bolt's study had ever been conducted at all. In essence, the foundation of the research, which aimed to compare albumin and HES, appears to have been built on shaky ground. With no albumin usage in the hospital and no concrete data to support the study's claims, it's increasingly plausible that Bolt's research may have been nothing more than a fabrication. By February 2011, LAK RLP had examined 74 scientific articles associated with Bolt and found that 68 of them lacked evidence of ethical approval. As a consequence, 16 medical journals, including Anesthesia and the British Journal of Anesthesia, collectively issued an open letter retracting a total of 89 articles authored by Bolt. In February 2013, a significant development emerged when the Journal of the American Medical Association, JAMA, published a meta-analysis. This analysis deliberately excluded Bolt studies that had previously been retracted due to their unreliability. The findings showed that using hydroxyethyl starch intravenously came with a considerably higher risk of both death and acute kidney injury when compared to alternative resuscitation solutions whereas Bolt had claimed the exact opposite. In light of the Bolt affair, research institutions and journals are re-evaluating their research oversight procedures. Clinical Ludwig Schaffen has reinforced its clinical study protocols and established a scientific steering committee for enhanced monitoring and guidance. Furthermore, Bolt admitted to falsifying the signatures of his co-authors on the copyright transfer form submitted to anesthesia and analgesia. As a result, he was dismissed from his position at the hospital. While Bolt's co-authors denied involvement in the fabrication, they too faced dismissal for their lack of cooperation with the investigation. The motivations behind Bolt's extensive fraudulent activities remain a mystery. According to Ignaz Wessler, a professor of pharmacology and the manager of LAK RLP's ethics committee, financial gain doesn't seem to be the driving force. Instead, it appears that Bolt's primary motivation was the relentless pursuit of recognition and acclaim. Stephen Schaefer shares this perspective, 
suggesting that Bolt's actions were fueled by vanity and a strong desire for personal fame. Joachim Bolt has since vanished from the spotlight. Rumors suggest he may have relocated and resumed his practice as an anesthetist, possibly in the Czech Republic.